you know, I mean, how a, a lot of artists, their life stories are that this guy lived remarkably long considering the, 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 the difficulty uh, his journey or mission was. So if you can live long enough, you know, something good might happen. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Neville Gerson. I live here in Chicago on Belmont Avenue and I'm an abstract painter. I'm basically a, a researcher with a, a palette and equipment and I'm there to uh, deliver iconic visions and images that uh, are relevant to the time that I've lived in. From the very beginning I worked with uh, as a French polisher at five years old with my father who was an upholsterer. And so I worked with materials that involved shining wood, varnishing wood, scraping wood. So I had a, a, a physical affinity to working with my hands and laboring for long periods of time with flat surfaces and colors. Eventually, through my education in, uh, in music, I went to music school, I, um, I composition and lyrics and I, my interest in visual arts, uh, I, fi I finally realized I was a much better artist than a musician and so I took what I had from music and packed it all up and included that in what I'm doing now in the art world. Right now, uh, I, I have to come up with an image that is both unusual and uh, interesting and fits in with the time that I've lived in and what I've selected is the uh, cosmology, uh, uh, something that you can't see. You can't see it in either a, a, a collider, a, a proton collider in, in Switzerland or an electromagnetic microscope. The vision of the forces and what I consider abstract painting seems to give, give me uh, material, material, intellectual material to create the work that I'm currently involved in. The last thing I want to do is make it look like it's been painted or that it's been worked on. I, I want it to look like it suddenly dropped from out of space or who did that. I like them as much mystery associated with the image as I can, I can muster. I've always enjoyed challenges and difficult things and, uh, that are involved with uh, numbers and theory and intense work and study. And what I conceive as a projected image as, rather than a flat two-dimensional surface, I try and create uh, uh, an image that is much the same as a, uh, either a hologram or a three-dimensional object that has a structure to it and that kind of moves as you move by it. I have a very plastic approach. I'm making something that I have no idea. I, I mean, I'm not sitting there thinking, uh, I'm gonna make this, this, or that. I know, generally speaking, what's gonna happen because I've done maybe two or 300 others that are similar and I get, but I'm looking for an, a, a dissimilar result to take it beyond. So I, I, will, I will change a step, add a step, make it larger, do something different. So I like the plastic of being, in, uh, being able to, to react to what I've seen and what I'm doing uh, in real time. You can fall in love with the idea, but 10 years later that kind of wears off. So it, it, I love being an artist in, in, in theory, but the daily thing is I need to do that because I, I get up and do it, you know, and I've been doing it, you know, painting 12, 16 hours a day for the last 30 years or so. So uh, it's uh, a blessing and uh, I, I look at it as a calling and, uh, and it's like, uh, uh, it's my uh, journey.
A successful artist is a guy who wakes up tomorrow and goes to work. That's a success to me. If you could just wake up and go to work with art, it's not about painting one picture for 20 years, it's about painting 20,000 pictures in 10 years. And it's a body of work. 